I want to share with you about the Father Heart of God. I've been a Christian for a long time, but there was a chance that I might never have existed. I was born a few years after the end of the war and have a sister who's four years older than me. My parents were living in Italy at the time and when my mum became pregnant with me they were living in Venice which sounds very romantic doesn't it but my father was a very hard man and I think my mum must have been very dismayed when she knew that she was pregnant again and when my mum was a few months pregnant with me he pushed her down the stairs so that's why I say I may never have existed. They returned home to England where I was born and when I was six months old, my father left for his best, when went off with his best friend's wife, never to be seen again. So you can see that from the start of my life, I had no understanding of what it was like to have a father, which of course is a story of many thousands of children today. And we survive, but God has a better plan for us. Through my grown up years, I often wish that my father would visit or at least send a birthday card or something, but it never happened. But I did have a very special person in my life and that was my great aunt um, who loved me whatever I did. The thing about I thought was odd about my aunt, that she was a major in the Salvation Army in Penge. Um, I had no other Christian influence in my life, but we would tease her terribly as children and uh, prance around in her bonnet and bang tambourines and things. But significantly, she prayed for me through all those years and really loved me. As a teenager, I had very little understanding of God. This was the 60s and we were doing our own thing. The world was changing and I had no place for God. And in time I met my husband and we were married, but I still had no belief in God. But when our baby was six months old, we went to the local church to see the vicar about having him christened. This was St. John's in Penge. Imagine our amazement when the vicar told us that he wouldn't do him because we weren't Christians. This was a Christian country, for goodness sake. We were very shocked. Wasn't that what the Church of England was there for? Um, Yeah, so um, I joined the Young Wives Group and they were very kind to me, but somehow I didn't feel like them. I smoked, I felt unclean inside. And of course, there are other battles like Do I really want to be a goody-goody? It took me about 18 months, but in the end, I came to know that like them, I wanted to belong to Jesus more than anything else. And I prayed a prayer asking God to forgive me and come and live in my life. And that's when I became a Christian. And it's been the most important and wonderful thing I have ever done. I have to say that for me, I really understood that I'd done wrong things and that I needed to be forgiven. I cried for weeks and I knew I had a father who loved me, which is not usual for people who've not had a father of their own. Remember, I said I wanted to share about the father heart of God. But I think the rejection in my early life and at other times never really left me. Some years ago, I was having a conversation on the phone with my mother who lived in Scotland. And for some reason, she started talking about my father and told me that when we were small, he'd written a letter to her, asking her to hurry up the divorce. He'd written, I hope you can manage to support them because as far as I'm concerned, they no longer exist. We ended the conversation and I came off the phone, numb. And all I could think of was that somewhere, sometime, my father had written down that I didn't exist. I rationalised with myself that I'd always known that and that God had long ago healed me. But the fact that it had been written down 
had such an effect on me. I pushed it away and a few months later I was in church when someone shared verse, see I have engraved you on the palms of my hands, your walls are ever before me. It's Isaiah 49 verse 16 and all of a sudden God was saying to me, it was written down that you weren't wanted, but I have written your name on my hand and it will never be rubbed out. The joy and the sense of being loved by my Father in heaven was immense. And you'd think that that would be enough, wouldn't you? But one of the things I did as a counsellor was to train in crisis pregnancy counselling. Um, when I was doing some training, I'd been sitting down one day praying and thinking about the sadness of some people's lives. And I started to think about my own pre-birth experience of being unwanted. And I felt even sadder. And I looked down at my lap where my Bible was lying open. It was the message version of the Bible and this is what was staring me in the face. I'll call nobodies and make them somebodies. I'll call the unloved and make them beloved. In the place where they're yelling out, you're nobody, they're calling you God's living children. Romans 9. That was completely wonderful. I'm God's living child. I'm somebody. I can never doubt his love. He shows me again and again. And he's a God who speaks, as you can see from these last things that I've shared. He's my father. If this is speaking to any of you who have felt rejected in your lives in any way, then you can contact the church at prayer at christcentralchurch.org.uk where someone will contact you and pray for you or, or introduce you to Jesus. So thank you for listening. Thank you.